Niche. What is our niche? You can niche down so you can niche out. Marry your niche while you're varying your format. If you're from America, I think they call it niche. Niches that make the most money. I'm from New Zealand, so I call it niche. Because when you are the niche, then you really have to choose a niche. So in just like the simplest terms, a niche refers to a specific audience that's attracted to a specialized subject. And that's basically what you're trying to reach with your content. We have a custom AI model that is going to help sort all of that for you. It will give you three different niches that are niche down and are relevant to your specific passions or interests so that you can keep going in that niche. So focusing in on a niche helps you to build authority, create educational content, and connect with your target audience's wants and pain points. So if you don't know, I run a page called Kiwi Dad, and it's all about sort of parenting strategies and tips and tricks, as well as the harder parts of parenting and how to just kind of communicate with your partner. Now, that combined following is about 100,000, and my target audience, I initially thought was new dads or soon-to-be dads. But through doing this and through figuring out what my actual niche and target audience are, I've seen that it's actually a lot wider than that. Now, Instagram heavily favors niche pages. So if you have niche down, Instagram will then send you to more people. TikTok is a little bit different. We can get into that later, but TikTok isn't so much about niche. Each video is judged on its own merit, essentially. So if you're wanting to grow on Instagram, you need to understand niche. But see, there's a common misconception about what, what a niche really is. And so people think that a niche is like fitness. You know, I'm in the fitness niche, but it's not. You need a niche down deeper than that. So a true niche would be like, I'm in the fitness for new moms that are trying to work out while managing a newborn baby. That's a niche. That's niching down. It's not broad. You go broad and then you go a layer deeper. Now, a quick little disclaimer here. I've seen it a few times where someone has niched down another level. For instance, I have a friend that started a Instagram page about reflux. And so baby reflux is when they've sort of They've got problems with digestion and she niched all the way down to that and for diet about that. And her page did all good. She grew to about 5,000 followers very quickly, but she lost the interest in reflux once her daughter grew out of it. And that's where you've got to be careful that when you niche down, you can limit yourself. But there's ways to niche down that are still really open. And we're going to go through that together today. So don't worry about it, don't stress it, but do be aware that you can box yourself in sometimes and that you just don't have that freedom to explore other ideas. All right, so regardless of if we have an established page or if we're starting a brand new page, we're going to jump over to the AI model that I've made. The link is in the description below and we're going to answer these questions. So I'm just gonna use me as the example and we're gonna go over everything here and see what it outputs. But likewise, you need to do the same thing. I do have example answers already that will help you, but I just very speed run this just so we can kind of all do it together. What are your passions and interests? Well, I'm a new dad who likes to learn ways to communicate with my daughter and be a better parent. I also like to film content and I'm quite interested in relationship communication strategies. So again, you can go into as much detail as you want here. The more detail you provide, the richer the output is going to be. What specific expertise or unique skills do you possess? Now, this could be huge. So you want to try and narrow it down to what you think your niche might be. So for expertise, again, if you've studied or maybe you've started a business or something like that, it's really good to put here. So for me, I've got, I have a bachelor's of education with a postgraduate in human development. I'm a professional public speaker. I've been paid to speak and I've taught in the education industry for just over seven years. Can you identify any gaps or unmet needs within your area of interest? Cool, so I've put that there is very little content available for dads and that the majority of dad content seems to be from a female perspective or that it's just like sort of funny stuff. There's a lot of funny stuff about dads, not that much stuff that is sort of deep 
and meaningful. So I think there's a gap there. Beyond your immediate interests, who else might find your content educational, inspiring, or entertaining? And again, just asking yourself these questions will unlock a new layer just in yourself. Like, who am I actually trying to appeal to? And I've put I think expectant or new parents will benefit a lot from it. It might be educational for existing parents. And I think that relationship tips and communication strategies can be useful for all couples, regardless of if they have children or not. Then we have what problem does your content solve or what value can it bring to your followers? Sharing what I struggle with in parenting, the unique role of fathers in the 21st century, how I manage work, parenting, being a good partner and having a side hustle of my content creation. All right, so I've fleshed those out quite a bit. Again, if you don't feel you have the time, you can just put sort of the bare minimum in, but the more you put in, the better the result is going to be. Now, because the prompts behind this are quite large, and it's also going onto Instagram and trying to find other pages within that space, it can take a little while. This might take two, three minutes to completely process the result. That's just because it does have to do quite a bit of work to try and find it. Now, one of the core things behind this is that it's trying to find an established niche that Instagram will then be able to apply your account to, but also one that is doing well. So part of the prompt here is that if it's not showing signs of engagement, it's not going to suggest that niche for you. So the results from this will only show you things that are likely to perform well. So let's have a look at what we get. Niche one, modern dad dynamics. This niche is perfectly tailored to you as it fuses your interest in enhancing communication with your daughter and your passion for sharing relationship strategies. It addresses the gap in meaningful fatherhood content. Modern dad dynamics is a platform aimed at new and expectant fathers seeking depth and guidance in their journey. This niche will resonate with your background in education and human development, allowing you to offer insights grounded in academic knowledge while also providing personal anecdotes and practical advice. That's perfect. Like that is already very close to what I'm doing. And again, it's taken me a while to figure this out. So if I had had this a year and a half ago, oh, it would have been great. And again, it then gives me three different content pillars that might work for me. So first one is father-child communication, and that's all around different strategies that dads can use to communicate with their kids better. And then from there to do that, I can then use another AI model we've got to find me the best communication strategies. And now I know based on the way this AI works that clearly if I make a video that says maybe the top five ways to communicate with your daughter and it's backed by academic literature about that, it's probably gonna do really well. So I don't have to think about that, it's just given it to me. And then from there I can adjust my strategy on what works best, but I have a pretty strong content pillar instantly. Here's another one, fatherhood and identity. And this is what I'm just starting to get into myself now. Explore the evolving identity of a 21st century father, including the balance of work, family life, and being a supportive partner. And can you see how I've niched down here to parenting and being a dad, but how that can actually still link in with something like productivity tips, because I can use productivity tips under this lens of how to be a more present dad. So I've niched down, but I've kept it really broad. And then it's given me a whole bunch of other ones, partners in parenting. And this niche is all around communication dynamics between parents and how to realign if you're not aligned. And you've got all sorts of things, communication between parents, how to balance things for fairness and equity, and how to make sure that your relationship still grows, particularly in that new parent phase. Again, these are just really strong ones that I don't have to think about, they've been made for me. Then what I've done with the third niche is I've made sure that regardless of what the previous two were, this third one will be completely different. So this is our sort of out the gate niche. 
It's something that no one else is really doing normally or sort of an emerging niche. For me, this is digital era family wellness. Let's see what it's come up with. Cool. So what it's saying is that I could actually make a pretty stable one around sort of digital literacy as a parent and with your kids. Maybe that I could set up, for instance, with this, this pillar about mindful tech integration and managing screen time with my daughter, how to set up blockers so that she can't see anything I don't want her to see, all that sort of stuff. So again, this is something I, I haven't actually made content on, but by seeing these pillars, I now see that there's this thing about tech life balance or yeah, just sort of how to keep your child safe online and that it's identified there's something there where if I make content, it will probably do well. And this might've taken me ages. I'm a, I don't even know that I would have found that without this. But now I know it, I can add it as a content pillar and then create content around that. Now, if we scroll all the way down, we'll see these audience profiles. And these are really good. These are the avatars of who is likely to click follow on our page if we make this type of content. So I won't spend too much time, but I'll just show you the first couple. So our very first one is males aged between 25 and 40. They're probably first time fathers or expect dads. They likely have a higher education and they live in urban or suburban areas. They're interested in personal development, work-life balance, and fatherhood. And one of their pain points or challenges is navigating the new responsibilities they have as a father or their anxiety or fear about becoming a father. They're worried about establishing a strong bond with their children and how their identity will reshape as they become a parent. And the way I like to think of it is, well, how, how was I feeling before I became a dad? And what would I have liked to see? But this has done that for me, which is like fantastic, super useful. Now this next audience profile is quite interesting because this is actually more like what my audience is and it's couples. So regardless of gender, age between 20 to 45, with or without children that are interested in improving their relationship dynamics, but particularly in the context of parenting. And my audience breakdown, it used to be about 70% female to 30% male. It's changed now to be about 55 to 45, so 55% female. But that is a, a large part of the audience I was originally attracting was actually mums that were then sending my content to the dads. And that slowly changed. I worked that out slowly over time, but this has told me already, hey, this is part of the target audience that's going to be interested in your content. So it's completely right. It's totally accurate, but I didn't know that. And this would have been really helpful because then I could have geared my content towards that. Then we've got another one here, which is parents trying to balance their professional lives with parenting and meet all their obligations while also being a good partner, which was oh, Man, what a juicy niche, full of great stuff that I'm really passionate about and want to learn more about so I can easily make content about it. And then down the very bottom, we've just got a little bit here that essentially tells you which content pillar is going to appeal to which target audience the most. And sometimes one pillar will appeal to all three of the target audiences. And so that's the one that you're like, okay, that is gonna get me a lot of reach. It's gonna do really well. So it's saying sharing my personal experiences of the challenges. So sharing my struggles and successes in parenting and relationship provides authenticity and fosters a deeper connection with my audience. So by sharing that I do struggle sometimes to manage work, being a good dad, being a good partner, having a little side hustle and talking about that, I'm actually going to reach a really wide audience because even if people don't have kids, they know what that's like trying to juggle everything. And if I share that and I say, hey, I've also found this one thing here that's helped me quite a lot, they're going to be interested in that. They're going to think, hey, I, I need a benefit from that too. Just for our stats, I started 2023 with 1,100 Instagram followers and about 100 TikTok followers. And I ended the year with 75,000 Instagram followers and 25,000 TikTok followers for a combined following of 100,000.